Hi, first grade. Happy New Year. We are getting back into writing. And um, we are now working on nonfiction writing. So we, um, let's see. So you learned the difference between fiction books and nonfiction books. And um, now we're gonna learn about text features in nonfiction books. What are those? All right, so we've learned that nonfiction books are real books that tell you something. They give you information. They can teach you about something or explain about something. Right, so we read a nonfiction book in order to learn um, or find things out about something new or something that we don't already know about. So a text feature in a nonfiction book, they're used to help you, the reader, better understand a nonfictional text. So the text features are there to help you. Um, and we're going to learn about that today. So boys and girls, we are going to do this activity over two days because there are a lot of text features. We're not even going to cover all the text features. We're just going to cover some important ones that um, we need to know about in first grade. As you go through school, you'll learn lots of other different nonfiction text features. All right, so how do we find a text feature? That's what we're gonna learn about today. So we are going to learn um, what different text features there are, and then we're going to explore on how we find them. So what do you need right now? You need the firefighter book. It should be a book that was sent home with you. Um, many of you probably got it before vacation. I'm not really sure how your teacher sent it home, but it is a book that's already been um, prepared for you. And then you will need your nonfiction text feature scavenger hunt paper. It looks just like this. Okay, so those are the two things that you need and a pencil. So if you don't have those activities or those pieces that you need, please pause the video and go get what you need. If you're in school, your teacher has them for you and will give them to you. You'll just need to get your pencil out. All right, let's get started. So the first text feature I want to talk about is called the table of contents. So a table of contents tells us the names of each chapter in the book or section, and it also tells us where to find it. So if you look over here where all these numbers are, it's going to tell you the page number. So that is where you would find it. So right now, this book is called All About Sharks. And there are different things that we can look at in the table of contents that will tell us what we might learn about that topic. So our topic is sharks. And if we look about, um, if we look at the different chapters, types of sharks, shark teeth, where they live, what they eat, cool facts, a glossary, and an index. So a table of contents helps the reader find something quickly. So sometimes when you do research, you may not necessarily read the whole book. So when I say research, do you know what research means? Um, I want you to pause for a moment and maybe talk to a neighbor or a friend at home and see if you have an idea what research means. All right, 
So, um, research is something that we do where we look for information that we want to find. So, if I am writing something or even reading, um, and I want to know something, I want to know more about sharks, let's say, then I'm going to research it. I'm going to search for more information and see if I can find the answers to my questions. So boys and girls, if I'm looking at this table of contents, I can see that if I read this book, I'm gonna learn about what different types of sharks there might be. Um, I'm going to learn about sharks' teeth. So I may learn about how many teeth they have. I may learn about how sharp their teeth are, what happens when um, a tooth falls out. So these are questions that I wanna ask and this book might help me find those answers. Because if I have all these questions about shark's teeth, then I'm gonna look at the table of contents and see, oh, shark teeth are on page five. Let me just flip to page five and see what they have to say about shark's teeth. All right, so in this book, I'll also learn about where sharks live and what they eat and then all kinds of extra facts. All right, so now it's our turn. We're gonna stop and we're gonna take a look for a moment. And we also want to use our scavenger hunt sheet. So I'm gonna do this first one with you to show you how we're going to do it. So right now we're looking for a table of contents and we're gonna take a look inside our firefighters book. So I'm going to minimize this screen and I'm gonna to go to my firefighters book with you. So now a table of contents, I forgot to tell you this important thing, is always at the front of the book. So do you think we'll have to turn very many pages? I don't think so. All right, so let's open the book. Does that look like a table of contents? Let's turn another page. Does that look like a table of contents? Let's turn the page again. Does that look like a table of contents? It certainly does. So boys and girls, as you can see, most of the time it even tells you it's the table of contents right here. So in this book, there is a table of contents. And if we look right here in the right-hand corner, it says page three. I'm gonna see if I can write on this. Let's see, I can spotlight. All right, so let's see. I don't know, I don't know how to do this. All right, let's not, okay, so. <laughs> Down here on the bottom, you see that number three. So this is page three. So we just found a table of contents in our book and it's on page three. So now boys and girls, I'm gonna go back to our, page. And what I'd like you to do is now look at your sheet, your scavenger hunt sheet, and we're gonna look for table of contents. Now I know boys and girls, these are a lot of big words and sometimes we don't know how to read them, right? Or um, figure them out because those are those tricky, tricky words. All right, so if you look on here and you, look at the picture that says table of contents. Those are the words that you wanna look for on your scavenger hunt sheet. So we already know that the beginning word has the beginning sound t -t -t. So then we wanna to come to our list here and we wanna look for art, right? So right now we have the top here says text features. Is it in your book, yes or no? What page is it on and what's your evidence? So 
boys and girls, we're gonna look, look, look. This one says title page. This one says, oh, table of contents. So is it in your book? Yes. So you're gonna write a yes in this box. Oops. All right. Oh dear. All right. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, then the next box asks, what page is it on? So remember I showed you that little three? So it's on page three. So you want to look on page or write page three right there. And then it says, what is the first section about? Well, let's go back to our book. The first section, right? That would be this one is introduction. So boys and girls, you are going to write, right on that line, introduction. So right here on this line, you're gonna write introduction, okay? So go ahead and pause. And then I want you to fill in your information and then come back and um, continue when you're done writing that first one. All right, boys and girls, so good job on your first one. All right, we are going to go to the next page. Our next text feature is called a heading. So a heading tells the reader what you're going to read about on the page or the section. So when we looked at our book and we saw that it has an introduction here, then it says, what makes fire burn? So it lists all the different chapters or sections of what you're going to learn about firefighters. Boys and girls, most of the time, these are the headings. So <clears throat> if we look through the book, right? If we look introduction, right? That's our heading. So if we look up here at this picture, it says central nervous system. So now all of the information after it is going to be all about the central nervous system. All right. So now it's your turn. You're going to look in your firefighter's book. You're going to use your scavenger hunt paper. You're going to look until you find heading. And then you're going to answer the question. Is it in your book? Yes or no? What page did you find it on? And name one heading you found. Boys and girls, please do not write introduction. We just did introduction. So I want you to find a new heading. All right, so go ahead and pause and then come back and we'll look at the different headings. All right, how'd you do? You feel good? All right, so let's look at our firefighter book and let's look at the different headings we could have found. All right, so here is a ne the next heading, what makes fire burn? And then all of this information is gonna tell us what makes fire burn. If we keep reading, this heading tells us kinds of fires. This heading tells us about firefighting tools. All right, this one is still going with firefighting tools. Our next heading is firefighting machines. This one's still talking about firefighting machines. Oh, so is this one. Oh my goodness, look at all these different firefighting machines. All right, this one is becoming a firefighter. And this one says conclusion. A conclusion is the end of a story. It wraps everything up. All right, and then we have this heading, which is glossary, and that's it. All right, so we're gonna go back to the first page for this. All right, if you look, boys and girls, look at this. All of these different areas 
sections of the table of contents, they are the same headings we just read. All right. So good job. All right, let's move on to our next text feature. Our next text feature is bold print. And I bet lots of you have already seen lots of bold print in books that you've read. So a bold printed word is an important word. It's a word that sticks out. So the author either makes it darker, um, they make it bigger, they could make it with a different color ink. They find some way to make it stand out and be different from all the other words on the book because they feel that that's a really important um, word that they want you to remember. So if we look on this sample right here, it's talking about frogs and it has this word right here, species is bold. And if you look, it's a different font, right? Sometimes the font can be, which is the way the letters are written can be a little different or bigger. So this one looks like it might be a different font, but maybe not, and it does look bigger. Down here is another word, amphibians, and they um, bolded that, and they also made it bigger. All right, so again, it's your turn. You're gonna go looking in your firefighter book, and you're gonna look for bold print, and you're gonna write your answer on your scavenger hunt sheet. So boys and girls, it asks for bold words. Are they in your book? What page number? And write two bold words that you found. Okay, so go ahead and pause and then come back and we'll take a look through the book together. All right, boys and girls, oops, I did it again. All right, let's look through our firefighter book. And remember, we're looking for bold words. Let's see if you found any of the words that we find. All right, if you look on this page, it's a little tough to see, but firefighters was written darker. So it's a darker black so that it sticks out a little more. So firefighters is a bold word. On this page, it looks like this word right here is fuel. So that one is bold as well. This one on page six here, we don't see any bold words. On page seven, we see the word spray. So spray is bold. So that would be an important word. None on page eight. Um, let's see, we have two on page nine. We have the word machines and the word pump. Those are all bold words. None on page 10, none on page 11, and none on page 12. Um, on page 13, we see the word training. So training is our bold word. And then in the conclusion, we don't see any. Now, boys and girls, I'm gonna show you something. Oh, not on 15 either. So this is called the glossary and we're gonna learn about the glossary in a little bit. But I wanna show you all those words we just listed oh, are right here on this page. And then the glossary tells you, look at that, what the word means. But we'll go back to that a little later. All right. Back to the beginning of our book. All right. So our next, oh, our next text feature we're gonna talk about are photographs and illustrations. So you guys are professionals when it comes to illustrations because illustrations, you do it all the time. So this starfish on the right-hand side is an illustration. So an illustration is something that's drawn 
and um, to show you, to show the reader what it looks like. So sometimes, not a whole lot, but sometimes nonfiction books will use illustrations as well. But for the most part, look at this um, starfish on the left-hand side. This is a photograph. And a photograph shows a real image of, to show the reader what something looks like. So a photograph you would take with a camera, right? We take it with a cell phone these days, right? This is where we take the majority of our pictures. And, um, and then you can see the real image of something. So that's what a photograph is. All right, so <clears throat> we are going to now take a turn. All right, so go ahead and pause and you are gonna look through the firefighter book and you are gonna find an illustration or a photograph. I'd like you to find a photograph. I don't think that I've seen any illustrations in here as we've flipped through. So let's stick with a photograph, so a real image. Is it in your book? What page and what does the picture show? Okay, so take a pause and then come back. All right, so boys and girls, we're not gonna go through a whole bunch of photographs, um, but look, right here on page three is a photograph of a firefighter making dinner. Um, on page four is a photograph of fire trucks. Page five is a photograph of candles. So, and we could keep going through the book. There are mostly photographs in this book. All right, we are almost done for today. I think we have one, oh, we have two more to do. So this is a caption, boys and girls. So a caption always goes along with a picture. So a caption gives, the, gives you, the reader, information about the photograph or the illustration. So if you look under this, illustra or this photograph, right, it's a real photograph, if you look under the photograph of the butterfly, there's an arrow pointing to it down here. It gives you information. It says, this is a monarch butterfly feeding on nectar from flowers. So this butterfly we can see in the picture is feeding on nectar. So even though there's a photograph and the information in the book can tell you the same things about the photograph, there's, when there's a caption, there's a little more information about the photograph. So it's either right under it, right next to it, above it, it could be inside the picture. It, it all depends on what the author of the book wanted to do. And the writing a lot of times is a lot smaller or it's different font than what the rest of the book is. So you're gonna go and find a caption in your firefighter book. So you also need to write about what you learned about or what you learned from the caption. So you get, you've got two lines to be able to write it there. Now don't copy what the caption says. I want you to put it in your own words. What did you learn from that caption? So go ahead and pause and then do that um, and then come back and we'll look to see if our book has any captions. All right, friends. I bet you are becoming rock stars at this. All right, if we look at this photograph in our book, there's no words around it. So there's no caption here. Here we have a picture of fire trucks and then we have writing down here. If you look right underneath the picture, that is a caption. And the caption says, New York City firefighters leave the station. Now, if we look at the picture, are the fire trucks leaving the station? Yeah. So the words are going to tell you all about the picture. All right. So now this one, 
has a caption right here. And it's more of a, did you know? So it's telling you some information about fire. All right, this picture is of a building that's burning, right? It's on fire. Underneath we have some, we have a caption. Firefighters battle a fire in New York. Now I'm gonna flip through a few because I do believe that there's a caption down here under this one, but I thought I saw one inside a picture. So I just wanna take a peek. This page 10 here has a caption right underneath. Page 11 has a caption underneath the photo. Page 12 has it above the photo. Page 13, below the photo. Here it is, boys and girls. In the conclusion, right? Look right here inside the picture. There's a caption inside the picture. It says, roasting marshmallows is a fun use of fire. So the captions can be in all different spots. We just saw that. All right. Our last one today is the glossary. And a glossary gives you the definition of important words in the text. So definition means it tells you what the word means. And the words are listed in alphabetical order. So ABC order, right? If we look at the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so forth then your words in the glossary, if there's an A word, it will come first, B word, and so forth. So if we look at this example of a glossary, the words it has are shin, skin, skull, thigh, and tooth, and they're all in alphabetical order. Now, if you look at the words, after the word is some more words. And these words tell you what this word in red means. So skull, and then it tells us the largest structure of bones in the head, right? That's up here. So boys and girls, what happens is when the author bolds a word, remember I told you that they're important words, those words are usually in the glossary because they might be a little trickier and they might be words that you may not know what they mean as you're reading the book. So the glossary is there to help you. All right, so now it's your turn. You're gonna pause, you're gonna look for a glossary and we know there's one there because we already looked at it. You're gonna write what page it's on and then you're gonna write one word and its definition. Um, boys and girls, I don't need you to write the definition of the word. You can just write the word. Okay, so pause and go back into the glossary. The glossary is always at the end of the book and find a word that's in the glossary and then come back and we'll look at it. All right. So let's look at our glossary here. Oh, just passed it. All right, so here's our glossary. Here are our words, firefighters, fuel, machines, pump, spray, and training. And look, they're all in alphabetical order, right? There were no A, B, C, D, or E words, so F was the first word. And then after it tells you what that word means. And this glossary does even something a little more. They put the page number for where you can find that word. All right, so boys and girls, that's it for today. I know it was a little long and I apologize. Text features take a long time to go through them all. And sometimes they're not easy to understand either. So we have to kind of take our time with it. So now I want you to um, make sure that you put your book, your firefighter book and your scavenger hunt paper 
somewhere safe because you're going to need it again tomorrow when we finish looking at the rest of the text features that we're going to talk about and learn about. So if you have a folder, you can put it in your folder or um, a spot at home where you keep um, you keep your work uh, so that it's um, you know aside so that no one um, uh, you know it doesn't get lost or anything. Um, and boys and girls, be sure to put your name on your paper. I know in my classroom. Um, I've been getting some papers that come back and they don't have names on them. And sometimes I don't remember who they belong to. So um, try to remember to put your name on it. Okay. So, all right, you guys are rock stars. You've been doing a great job. And um, I hope you have a nice day. All right. Bye, boys and girls. See you tomorrow.